Welcome to Ireland and welcome to Limerick. This is the event Bus Eurotest 2022 and we have five brand new electric buses behind me and now we will figure out who will be Bus of the Year 2023. Let me explain to you how we are finding the bus of the year 2023. Every year the bus and coach jury goes to different places around Europe to find either the bus of the year or coach of the year. This time the international bus jury is gathered here in Limerick in Ireland to find the best city bus of the year. So we have gathered all of the European bus and coach journalists which is included in the bus and coach jury to test drive all these five different vehicles. All manufacturers get an invite but they are self deciding if they want to come or not. To find the right winner of the test we are doing several kind of tasks. The first thing we start with is a braking test and our friend from Germany Sascha he's in charge of that. I'm Sascha from uh, German magazine Omnibus Revue and uh, of course Bus TV. And uh, now we start with uh, braking tests. I make a uh, braking measurement and I have here a drift box. It's from uh, Motorsport. And then uh, we make four braking test measurements, yeah, four times. And uh, we take the best results. We uh, make a measurement from tempo 50 to zero. So we go into the Volvo. Then I have here my drift box. We start our first uh, brake test. After the braking test, the next day we will start with the presentations. Here all the manufacturers will have their minutes to shine, tell about their products before we hit the road. My name is Sean Morte. I'm the editor of Fleet Bus and Coach. It's an Irish publication and we are so happy and delighted to be hosting the International Bus of the Year event. It's been a challenge because everybody coming here is used to driving on the opposite side of the road and the opposite side of the vehicle. At the moment we're in Limerick Racecourse. Um, it's a fabulous facility just outside Limerick City. There's two aspects to this competition. There's the very hard work that we do in the daytime and then at night time we've shown everybody some of the Irish culture. Uh, this, this year it's, it's unique because we have five electric buses. Now Ireland are a little bit behind um, in, in being ready for electric uh, buses. We've had some challenges to say the least and the charging infrastructure but by the time everybody comes back to Ireland the next time we'll have all that resolved. We actually met the Mayor of Limerick City and uh, we told him very gently but very firmly that uh, the city needed to improve its uh, charging infrastructure. So now join us while we're going on the road to test drive these five vehicles to figure out who will be the winner of Bus of the Year 2023. Welcome on board to the first electric bus we're going to test drive in Bus Eurotest 2022. I am seated behind the steering wheel of the Mercedes-Benz e Citaro. And now let me talk you through the starter procedure on this bus. Down on my right we have an ignition key. I just turn that to the first step and when the Mercedes-Benz logo is gone I'll just turn it on and I'll wait until we get the needle to the zero and we're ready to go. There is no seat belt here and we have the right hand side steering so let's close the door and let's get ready to departure. I push the transmission into drive and we are rolling. I assume this is actually the first right hand drive Mercedes-Benz e Citaro ever built. So this is not a product that Mercedes-Benz have on the market yet but they really want to come in also to the UK market with this bus. This e Citaro have 12 battery package in total. Many of them are placed on the roof and the rest is placed in the back where the original engine would have been standing. And all these batteries will give an effect on 397 kilowatt hour. The drive axle is delivered by ZF and the electric motor is placed in the hub. This is a powerful engine with 270 kilowatts and the range of the bus will be approximately 270 kilometers. The 
length of this bus is 12 meter and it's 36 seats on board with three folding seats and you can have two wheelchairs on board and this vehicle have also capacity for 20 standing passengers. Since this is the first time we will see the Easy Taro with the right hand drive, we will also see a quite different interior. There is no middle door, there is no back door, it's only a front door in this bus. So that also means that the wheelchair will come in the front door. So here we have the ramp in the front door and on the right side there is also one emergency exit. So if you would flip over or do a rollover or be blocked on the left hand side, you could always also escape the bus on the right. seats are quite comfortable it looks like the old Citaros that we were used to but somehow I would also like a more innovative maybe interior on this bus it's old-fashioned you recognize it but also I would like to see something new and in the back here we have a huge box for the electronics I would maybe like to see a more open space there in the back it takes away maybe at least four seats from the back of this bus with this big enormous box in the background I think the driver compartment here is very comfortable to use. I'm seated comfortably even though I don't have the seat belt. I miss that little safety feature. And I'm also seated comfortably with vision. I see clearly in front, I have great windows to my right. And I do have regular manual old-fashioned mirrors. One big standing mirror here on the side. And on the left I have a standing mirror with also the wide angle on the left. I have great vision here in the display. To my right where the diesel is normally showed, I have the battery capacity. And to the left we also have a capacity uh, meter, but that's not actively in use in this bus, but that's prepared if you want to have some other kind of fuel system like hydrogen in this bus. To the right we have the meter that shows how much energy you use. To the left we have the speedometer. In the middle you have the regular display like you also are used to from the coaches. And this is also the steering wheel from a regular Turismo so you feel like you're driving a much bigger and more comfortable bus than what you actually are nice buttons nice view very comfortable to drive not much sound this is a very good bus from Mercedes-Benz but we have more buses to test out so let's go and find another bus on the test field here in Ireland Welcome on board to the Volvo and this Volvo is called Volvo BZL and this bus is built by the Egyptian manufacturer MCV and now let's take you through the startup procedure on this bus. First we will start with the master switch over here and then we have a regular ignition key on the right of the steering wheel. Just pull it the first little step when the Volvo logo is showing up, turn it around, hold it in and then you will very soon get your little startup point. There we go. So then we are ready to go. There is no seat belt in this bus, so let's just do it the old-fashioned way. Put it into drive, release the handbrake, and we're ready to go. As you can see, we're driving a bus with digital mirrors, but I have no idea actually where the bus is on the road. As we have mentioned before, with digital mirrors, we don't have any clue of the length of the bus. Especially now when I'm driving from my preferences on the wrong side of the road. I'm a little bit unused to this feeling. But let's take it easy and hopefully this will go smooth as it goes. The bus we're driving right now has four battery packages and total power of those are 376 kilowatt hours. And the power from this one is from a single engine and that will give you 200 kilowatts. And this is a two-speed transmission, so it's a quite good bus to use. And when I asked about the range of the bus, Volvo actually didn't have a good answer on that, but they say that it will vary from what kind of operation you're using the vehicle for. We're now driving a bus with 39 sitting seats with also three folding seats and you can have one wheelchair on board this vehicle. There is also a possibility to have 49 standing passengers on board this bus. So you have a quite good capacity on this bus. It also helps that you only have one front door in this bus so there is no middle or back door but it also slows down the exiting 
and the entering of the bus. But there is actually an emergency door on the right side of this bus. So if you will get a flip over or you will be blocked on your left side, you can also exit the bus from the right hand side. This bus is 12.1 meters long and it's only 2.5 exactly meters wide. So it's five centimeters narrower than the European buses we see, for example, back in Norway. The bus is built on the same platform as the 7900, but with the UK specifications for Ireland and for the UK. And there is differentials also from the European buildings because here we have the windscreens that are coming down from the top roof. It almost looks like this is a double-decker cut in half. As you might have heard, it's quite a lot of sound in this bus. There is some fans going on and there's a lot of plastic elements that is really shaking up this bus. And we were sitting on the back of the bus earlier and we felt there was too much going on. Behind the bus we have, as we said, 39 seats. And I would say the seats are really comfortable. The seats are made of Vogelsitze and they are very nice to sit in. And you have chargers in all seats. And you also have the wireless system with a holder for your phone. So you can charge your phone, you can watch a film, for example, one of our bus magazine films in the seats here on the bus. Speaking of seats, the driver's seats, it's not the best one I ever tried. It's a very small seat. You almost have no flexibility in it and it's really hard to sit in. There is no suspension in the seat. I feel like I'm sitting on a bench in a park. This is not the perfect seat for a bus and I don't think this is a very good environment to drive in to be sure. But what I do like about a seat, I'm positioned very high. I'm in good sight for my view and I'm also the right eye height when I meet passengers when I step on board the bus. And also one of the reasons why I'm seated higher is because it's a lot of safety features included. So if something would happen, I would be in a much safer situation. Only very bad, I don't have a seatbelt. And also when you see my interior here, I maybe have seven buttons. There is nothing extra here. Light switches, gear changer, electricity and door buttons. So now let's jump into the next bus. Welcome on board the Carsan. This is the IATA 12. Here we have the regular ignition key. We just turn it on to the first step and then we are ready to go by pushing a button over here. And there we got the power signal. So then we should actually be able to release the handbrake, put a transmission into drive and then let's hit the road with this Turkish built Carsan. <laughs> This bus has only four battery packages and there's a lot of power in each battery package. In total it's 459 kilowatt hour in this bus and the range is supposed to be 450 kilometers. This bus has a length of 12 meters exactly and we have 27 seats on board this bus. There is a capacity of 49 standing passengers and there is also capacity for one wheelchair on board. And here we have a 2 plus 2 plus 2 door solution. This is a European solution where we also have middle and back door. The axle here is delivered by ZF and the electrical engine is placed in the hub and has a power of about 250 kilowatts. So it's a quite powerful package in this bus. And I also feel that when I drive because the pedal is a little bit sensitive. So when I drive I need to hold a quite steady pedal to not get an uneven driving style. Inside here we do have the digital mirrors. When I'm driving in regular speed I don't have any indication of where my back end of the bus is. But if I turn on the turning signal I will get markers to see where my door is and where my back part of the bus is. This mirror is very close to my face. If I would be needing glasses and have problems with the near sight of my eyes, I think this would be too close. And this is placed low and the other one is placed high. So I have to look up and down, up and down to actually see the mirrors. I don't like the placement of this digital mirrors. This bus also have mobile eye installed, so you can also get some help if there will be any pedestrians, any obstacles you don't see, bicycles, something in the road that will affect your driving. For me, I like it better if it's implemented in the electronic of the bus.
I'm actually quite comfortably seated here, but I think the steering wheel here is the most out of date from this competition. This steering wheel we have seen in years after years after years, and there is also a lot of noise here in the front. My vision is good, I have a great big front window, and it's almost like a BRT front system here. You have this little futuristic design solutions, but it's also a little bit old fashioned, so they have old fashioned design something new and modern. I have a big great manually window here on the left, I can open that if I want to, and I have the buttons I need here in the front. In the display I have every information I need, date, the time, the speed, the power. So I think Carsal have made a very functional product here, but I still would like to see a little bit newer dashboard and fix the placement of the mirrors. At least place them in the same height, I will be a much more happy bus driver. But we still have other buses to test, so let's go in to the next bus. Welcome on board to the Higer Azur. Now we will start up the bus and do the startup procedure before we will take the bus out on the road. Here we have two green buttons on the front of the dashboard. I'll first push the one to start up the power, the electricity. I will push the other green button and there we go. And here I can actually even fasten my seatbelt. And this is not all buses in this test that have a seatbelt. Because if you're driving a class one bus, it is actually not mandatory to have a seatbelt for the bus driver. This is something customer will specify themselves. And we also have the DNR button system here, just like an old good old automatic transmission and then we release the handbrake and it's pedal to the metal right now I feel like I'm in an amusement park the sound here is exactly like this uh, train that you're doing between uh, parks if you are for example in Disneyland and the blinker sound as well is really overwhelming if you're seated in the back of this bus you can hear both this uh, jingle bells and the blinker sound and for me I don't want to sit in the back of a bus and hear all the sounds in the vehicle. This bus we are driving from Heiger right now has 10 battery packages. Four of the batteries are on the roof and six is divided on the left and right side down in the chassis here in the bus. The total battery capacity on this bus is 350 kilowatts and have the longest range of the bus test with incredibly 460 kilometers for one charge. That's quite amazing. If you can make this into a class two bus, you can actually go quite far distances with this bus. And it is possible to convert this one to a class two bus because you have emergency exit in the roof and you also have emergency exit on the right hand side. This bus is using the same axle as the EC Taro. So this is delivered by ZF. It has about 270 kilowatts and the electro engine is placed in the hub. This bus has a length of 12.3 meters. Behind me in the bus there is 40 seats and here is also 6 folding seats. And you get a lot of seats in this bus because there is only one front door. There is a 2 plus 0 plus 0 door solution on this bus. That creates a bigger capacity and there is also a capacity for 24 standing people in this bus and one wheelchair. So you have a great accessibility but I would probably like to have a middle door and a back door. I do have regular mirrors on this bus and here I have double set of mirrors. Mirror. Two hanging mirrors like a coach, both sides. It is uh, actually a wide angle mirror on the right side, but I have to lean down all the way here to see it. Driving feeling of this bus, I'm comfortably seated. It's not very much to do from the driver's point of view to, to adjust the steering wheel, to adjust the seat, but I have everything I need. This is the only Chinese bus in the competition, and we see that when we look down to the dashboard. It's a lot of things going on. I have my speedometer, I have 2000 points and checklists I can do with voltages of battery capacity of things I would never ever use as a driver. And I also have my RPM, which is strange because this is an electro engine. So I think you could clean up this dashboard a lot. And I don't know why all the Chinese manufacturers try to have as much information as possible. Other than that, I think this is nice, okay bus to drive, but it's too much plastic noise in here. When you're sitting in the back, you feel like you are shaked. You feel like you're inside of a milkshake, but we still have more buses to test. Join us for the next bus.
So then we are here behind the steering wheel of the last bus of the competition. And this is the MIN Lion City 12 E. And the E stands for electric, like all the other buses in this competition also are. Here we have a very good environment for the driver. And look at this, I have a lot of space for me as a driver here. The seat is very adjustable. We have all the buttons and everything that we need. So let's do the startup procedure for this bus. And it's as easy as it gets. Just turn on the ignition. We have the regular key here, and then you will soon see some things coming up on the display. And when all the light turns off, you can just pull the key all the way. And then I can adjust my steering wheel, fasten the seat belt, turn it into drive, release the handbrake, off we go. Then we're on the road with this Man Lion City 12E and we are driving a very comfortable bus. And the steering wheel really follows what you're doing. But it is a little bit strange to sit here in Ireland on the wrong side of the road with the left hand steering wheel, but it, it works out. We're now driving a bus with six battery packs on the roof. In total, there is 480 kilowatts and you can use 380 kilowatt hours of them. So it's a quite efficient bus and the range is about 350 kilometers. And with good conditions, you might get even more. The length of this bus is 12.1 meter and the door solution is 2 plus 2 plus 2. So only double doors on this bus. Inside the bus we have 29 seats with two folding seats. So actually 31 seats then plus the driver's seats. And we can have 47 standing passengers on board plus a wheelchair. So you have quite a good space in this bus. And with this comfort, it's very, very nice for city traffic all over Europe. We have digital mirrors here, it's uh, quite functioning, of course, it's a bright day, it's only slight of rain, it's no big obstacles for the conditions. Two standing mirrors on both sides with um, wide angle mirrors on top. And the mirrors is called Opti View. I feel it turns very well, it follows the road very easily. There is no big blind spots as I can see and the vision here is very good. Big, big window here to my left, big, big doors here to the right. And I have a great front screen here in my front. There is nothing here I can actually complain about. And what we also talked about in the Norwegian test of this bus, I love the detail of the lowered side window. It creates a much lighter environment for me as a driver. You feel more comfortable, you see better, and you also feel that you're also eliminating a little bit of the blind spots here to the left. We have a lot of safety feature in this city bus. We will start with the Mobileye. This bus have also a better front collision guard, so you will have more protected area if you would come into a crash. And this is the ECE R29. And the bus also have the rollover protection. So the R66 requirement that is actually required for a class two or three bus is also implemented here. So this is a very safe bus to drive, even in a state of traffic. After many, many test drivings, hours on the road, kilometers left behind, we are now done with all the testing of the vehicles. All the European journalists have made their own good impressions, bad impressions, and now it's time to gather the jury to figure out who will be the winner of the Bus Euro Test 2022 here in Limerick. And now we are gathering the jury inside of the bus behind me. Normally we will have the important jury meeting inside of a conference room, but the hotel was overbooked. So we were solution smart and did a meeting inside the Higer instead. We can only speculate in who the winner will be. So now it's up to the jury to figure out who the winner of the bus of the year 2023 will be. I'm glad that and hope that I've given you a flavor of what this event has been like and has uh, been in Ireland. And uh, maybe someday you can all come to visit us in Ireland.
Thank you so much for watching the video here today. And if you're curious who will win the bus of the year 2023, then you have to follow us on YouTube. So please subscribe to our channel down here to see all the future content we will make on Bus Magazine. Have a great day and until then, drive safe. Thank you.